Hi there. I've been asked to show you how I attach eyes. Um, I'm going to do that in a moment um, on this particular pink bear. Um, you will notice that I've already done his nose. Um, I usually put the eyes in before I do the nose, um, but I wanted to do something different with him. I wasn't quite sure how, how I wanted him to look. I've also loosely pinned on his ears because I wanted to see what his face looked like. It's quite cute. Um, he is going to have eyelids and that is another video that I've done um, on how to do eyelids. So I'm not going to cover that in this one. This is just simply threading the eyes through. Now these are glass eyes. Um, just so that you can see... I've marked where his eye sockets are going to be um, with position eyes. And this is just simply a glass eye on a pin, quite a sharp pin. And they are sharp, believe me. I've had them go into my fingers several times. But it just allows you to place them wherever you would like to see the eyes. And obviously, depending on where you place the markers, it gives you a completely different look for your bear. If you don't have position eyes, and you can get these in different sizes from lots of different uh, bear making supply retailers, um, you can actually use the eye that you want to use, so your glass eye, I prefer to use the ones with the loops on the back, but you can get other ones with like a little spring. I don't use um, safety eyes in mine because these are not going to be suitable for children um, and it's one of the things that can actually come off your bear if a child was to pull it, tug it, manipulate it really, really hard. But the idea is that they won't with this method I'm going to show you. So you can actually use a T-pin. Uh, these are used for sort of macrame and wig making. Put it through the loop at the back and I'm going to take my position eye out there and what I can actually do is place it into the socket that I've already pulled in terms of where I think I would like that eye to go. Now it won't sit as tightly as the position eyes but you can at least get a rough idea of what that's going to look like. Now these, these eyes here are a 14 millimeter eye this position eye is a 10 millimeter. You can get the position eyes going up to, I think it's a 15, 15 millimeters. I do have some somewhere, but lost them somewhere in the house move. I've seen them since we've been here, but you know what it's like. You always put things down. Not quite sure where I've put them. So that's an alternative in terms of putting them on a T pin. Okay, we'll just take that out for now. So it's quite important when you are actually selecting your glass eyes, try to make sure that you get, not only do they look the same sort of size, that also when you turn them that way, that they look about the same depth. They can vary dramatically. So it's always a good tip to actually just check them all round just to make sure that they look as though they should be a pair. I never buy just one pair of eyes at a time. I'm usually buying quite a few at a time. Um, so hence why you get them sort of in a packet. I usually then put them to mine into a jar. Um, so those are all 10 millimeter eyes in there. Um, and you can select different ones, obviously, to, to get the closest to a pair that you possibly can. Okay, so with this bear, um, we're going to do his eyes. I've already created the eye sockets. Um, you can only do this if you're going to be putting the uh, these kind of eyes in. Um, I don't know of a technique for using uh, and making eye sockets for the safety eyes. Um, if anybody does have uh, a, a technique for doing that, then you know please share it and uh, we'll, we'll share it with um, everyone out there in the bear making community. But I'm not aware of one. Okay. So, I've got my eyes, I've selected them, they seem to be about the same sort of size. So, right, now Ted, what we're going to do is we're going to get some whipping twine. Whipping twine is quite thick, um, it's got sort of a waxy feel to it and they use it for making um, sails. So we're going to get a good length of that, 
probably way too much, far more than we will need. Just need to cut two lengths of that. So that's length number one and length number two. Okay. So what I'm going to do here next is I'm going to double it up. So that's two lengths and I've got a loop end and then I've got the two other ends. What I'm going to do is I'm going to thread the looped end through the loop in my eye or the back of my eye like that, open it out and take the other end through so that it actually can then swing. Okay, I'll show, just show you that again. So that's I double up my whipping twine. I pop it through the looped end, through the looped end at the back of the glass eye. I open up the loop and I pull the cut ends through. Okay, now that, if we were to try to pull that through into the bear's head, wouldn't go because that is actually on a wire. Okay, so I've got my whipping twine through the loops. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take my little tiny pliers, which are absolutely fantastic. They are absolutely invaluable in pulling um, needles through noses, in bending these things, these loops on the eyes, on plucking out hair around muzzles, like so. I think we've got a little bit there. I'm not sure if I'm picking much of it up. I don't want to put too much up. Um, it just really helps you. It gives you that extension of your hand. But what we're going to do now is we are going to squeeze this so it closes up. You can see I've done a little bit there. I am trying to do it to the camera, which is quite difficult. So please bear with me just one second. I'm hoping you can see that. So we close that loop. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to turn it that way. I want that pin now, or that wired loop, to almost become like a pin. So can you see that now? Okay. Just do the same with the other one. Take your time with this. The smaller the eyes are, sometimes you can find that the, find that the wire pops off and unfortunately you're then left um, with a separate piece of wire and eye. Again, that's one I've just done. So we've now got our set. Those ones that do pop off are quite often used for little belly buttons by gluing them on. You just pluck some of the hair away on the belly um, and simply glue them on. Okay, so now we've got our eyes on that. Okay, I've decided where I want the eyes to go. And what we do is we probably take a medium length doll needle. Just in case you don't know about doll needles, these, are, well, they're called doll needles in, in the UK. They're just very long needles. This one's actually 130 millimeters, which is five and one eighths of an inch. Okay, so it's quite a long needle. But what I need it to do is I need it to go into that socket and I also need it to come out at the other side. Can you just see that there? So that's why we need such a long one. Okay, I'm just going to thread my loose ends through. Now, I haven't got those so that they finish together, so I'm just going to snip those off like that and pop that through there, just thread that up, there we go. So it's just threaded through, so the two ends are through. Okay, so that is now on my needle. Okay, now I've already decided where I want the eyes to go. I'm just gonna quickly pop my position eyes back in so I get them in the right area. One way to do this to mark them out is um, where the base is of the pin is 
to get a marker. Now I'm going to use a black permanent marker and it doesn't matter because it's going to be covered by the eye. And I just sort of tip the black there. I'm just going to take the position eye out and hopefully you can see it there. So that is the area that I'm actually aiming to put the pin through. So I'm just going to do the same with the other side. Okay, that's my position eyes out and my lid on my pen. Okay, so I've now got them both marked, one and two. So I've got my needle threaded with my eye and I'm going to go in. So if I can do it to camera for you. I'm going to go in to there. I'm just checking, not quite in the right place. Um, and I just wanted to check, because obviously I was doing that to camera. And I'm going to go in through the eye socket that I created. And I want to come out as close to the cotter pin and the bottom of the head. Because I want to be able to tie it off underneath. So again, sometimes you have to wiggle it round because you'll feel the cotter pin, which is, in mine is just there because I can feel it. So I need to aim for it to come out. And that's not too far away from the cotter pin. Okay, before I pull it all the way through, I'm going to give it a good wiggle. The wiggle helps to open the fabric up sufficiently to be able to pull the metal part of the eye through. And that way you get a nice firm eye. So pulling it through, sometimes it will pop as it goes in, other times it doesn't. And there is his eye. Excellent. Right, I'm going to take that off my thread. So we've got one eye. I am now going to take the other eye, thread my needle. My ends aren't the same length, which doesn't make it easy for threading. I'm going to thread up my needle. Okay, so on the same needle, go in to where I made the dot. You can just about see that there. So I'm going to have to turn in this way because I need to get this right now. So take a bit of time. This way, at least if you just put it through and we haven't finished it off, so we haven't tied it off at the end yet, we can always take it out if we need to redo it because those holes will close back up and put them somewhere else. So I think that is about, I'm hoping that's going to be about right. Let's give it a wiggle. You will bend needles doing this, but you know, these don't cost a great deal of money. So always have a good stash of them. Okay, so you probably heard a little pull or like a feel like a tear as I did that, and that's just some of the fur. Oh, I'm quite happy with where his eyes have come out there in that. Don't forget these are loose, they're just pinned on at the moment. They're just pinned where I think roughly they should go just to help his face come along. Okay, now I'm going to tie off underneath. So I turn him over and I've got, I'm gonna take his ears off because it's got long threads on and we're going to get confused with the threads. So I'll put those on one side. Okay, so we've got one here and we've got one here. Okay, what I do is I take off one of the threads and this is just the way I do it. There's hundreds of other ways, I'm sure, to tie this off. I've seen some where you go backwards and forwards through the head, but it's entirely your choice. I'm now going to go very close to the hole where it came through and I am going to thread it thread it through to where the other eye came out. Sometimes it takes a little bit of skill and a little bit of time to actually do that because you want it to come through quite close. Okay, so that's the one I've just sent through. So I've got three on one side and one on the other side. The two that are together, I'm going to separate. I'm going to split those out. These are twisted round. Just untwist those. I'm going to thread one of these up. And you've probably guessed already, I'm actually going to put that close to the hole. 
and I am going to thread through the head back to where I've just got the one thread at the moment. So there we go, it's through. Take my needle off, pull those nice and tight to make sure we've got nice firm eyes, which we should have, and just check those. And then all I simply do is tie those off Make a couple of tiny little knots, pull it really tight. You will struggle to break it. As I say, I've only done it, ever managed to do it once. So I've got three little knots there and then I snip it off quite close. Let's do the same with the other one. Nice and tight. Third one for luck. Again, let's snip that in. Take that off. Now, because it's come out close to the cotter pin at the end here, that is actually going to go against the body. So, where you've made those little ties, you won't see them because they will be against the body. The other thing I do is just brush the fur, and that's just a common old garden dog brush. Dogs love it. To go wild for it. Sorry if you can hear anything in the background, I do have my washing machine on because the other half's gone to work this evening, so just otherwise he complains that it's the devil's washing machine going on. Okay. So there we go. We have eyes in sockets and that's ready now for me to do The eyelids. Hope you found it useful. Please let me know. Um, we'll be putting some more videos on the channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up or subscribe um, and hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.